It's CSV TV's We Rewind. It's CSB TV Rewind. Today we're looking back at Tanya Todd from a show, The Show Must Go On, Emily Soskowski of The Artist Within, and Dakari from Writer It's Writer. Interviews our very first episode and very first show of CSB TV. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Show Must Go On. I'm Casey Bell, your host, and today we have Tanya Todd. Let's get started. Thank you for joining another episode. Today's guest is Tanya Todd. She is an actress and author, uh, podcast host, and so much more. Let's take a listen at our interview together. When was your earliest, if you can remember, the earliest memory where you said, I think acting might be something I, I, I would like to do? Probably when I was a kid, when I didn't realize what went into it you know it just seemed fun and i liked different voices and seeing people do superhero stuff like i liked superheroes even as a child and so you know it would be fun to do something like that and then years later i did not think it was an option but i was a little girl what were your um when you first came to the knowledge that, okay, this is actually something I can do. What were some of the steps you started to take to make this a profession? Well, take acting classes. <laughs> <laughs> when you care about an art, you kind of need to you focus on the craft part of it and learn it and respect it enough to, to learn the details of it. It's not just a matter of, well, you want to do it. That means you can do it. That's a start, but you need to learn how to do it well in order to respect that craft. And so I took classes, I started auditioning, I got headshots and I learned, I started learning about the, not the business side of it, but the craft side of it and meeting different people, you know, networking with people who were already involved with it so that I could ask them questions because to be completely honest, I had no idea what I was doing to start. <laughs> With that said, when did you start realizing that there was a business side to it and you had to focus on that as well? Probably when I realized how little money there was in it at the very beginning of it. When people kept asking me to work for free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. You know, I wasn't expecting that I was going to sign a million dollar contract or anything, but I did expect to be paid for my service. Right. When it's a collaboration, you know, that's one thing. If you are working with someone who's trying to develop their their own reel, say you're working with a director or a filmmaker and they're, they're at the beginning and they don't have the money to pay for everything, I am happy to work for free if it means that we're collaborating on a project and, you know, they're going to provide something for my reel. Because there is an exchange there. We are off, it's a trade, you know, we're offering each other something. But if somebody wants to just make something and you don't get anything out of that experience, then they're just asking you to work for free. Welcome to another episode of The Artist Within. I'm Casey Bell, your host, and today's episode we speak with Emily, I won't even try to pronounce her last name. Emily is a unique artist whose artwork reminds me of an artist who she was inspired by. An artist I'm sure you'll be able to tell once you see the artwork. Let's start this interview. So my first question, how did you find The Artist Within You? I think I've always 
I know when I was a kid, I grew up kind of surrounded by artists. I mean, my grandma did it as a career. My dad always kind of just did it for fun. He never really did it for money or anything. He would just kind of draw monsters. My grandma did it like she was really good at painting, but she did kind of the complete opposite of what I do. Um, and then my dad would kind of draw monsters just to be silly, and I kind of took after both of them, I think. Cool. Um, so I asked this question because I grew up in the art world, and professionals always tell people there's a wrong way to do it. You shouldn't do it this way. That's wrong, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So when I see unique art, I'm always happy that people decided to do things their way as opposed to the right way. And so- Oh, yeah. Yeah. What encouraged you to stay unique, to be you? Um, I think it's, I don't know, I always just liked, I think I was, when I first got into art, I think I tried too hard to make it look a certain way, and it just kind of stressed me out, but mm -hmm. then once I started drawing just because, just to have fun and enjoy it, that was when I realized that this was my real style like this was more me I felt more myself I think mm -hmm. when I tried too hard to like get proportions right and stuff it didn't really work for me <laughs> so all right so first question um well, first of all tell me a little bit about yourself as far as being a um, writer um so I've been a writer I'm a family man um uh, I believe, in, I believe in loyalty. I study a lot on spirituality and history. I'm trying to find, uh, I guess, I, I'm trying to find answers to questions that most, that most people don't ask. Um, okay. I'm a, I'm, believe it or not, I'm a nerd in art, so I love to learn. <laughs> and I like making people happy. That's good. So when did you um, start writing Gorillas in the Bay? And um, explain the, the title, what inspired the title. Okay, well, I originally wrote Gorillas in the Bay in 2000, and I started in 2007. I, however, you know, I was, I tend to procrastinate a lot of times, so drew on, drawn on, drawn on. But to make the long the story short, um, I finally finished it and started typing it on the USB. And I had it all complete. And unfortunately, I threw away the written pages and damaged my USB. Oh, goodness. I had the, um, I had the prologue and I had the last chapter. And I rewrote it all and, um, December 2016, and um, but the title is interesting because that's not the, the the book that I wrote, and the title didn't go hand in hand. It was originally called something else, but by the time I finished the story, because I may have an idea for a book and I'll start writing it, but the story tells itself in my head, mm -hmm. so it changed so much that by the time I was done, that title no longer fit the story. I don't know if, if um, that makes sense or if you're familiar with that, but... That has happened to me a few times. Um, yeah. What I planned to write when I started writing, it didn't... Something else wrote itself. Yeah, and I tend to, I tend to see that, like, so far, I've, um, it makes my book better. Yes. Instead of, trying to, yeah, instead of trying to keep it on board, I let it write itself and tell itself, and it makes the books better. And although the world is just now getting familiar with Gorillas in the Bay, so it, it's it's just one series of one book. I've actually written nine. Oh wow! So they're just, they're, they're coming out. <laughs> they're coming out a little slower, but um, I have a unique handwriting, and then getting it typed up, and then edited and re-edited my rewrite took time until I found the. Um, the app on Google that allows you to transfer handwriting to type. Oh, okay. Um, it is speed the process. But my editor, my publisher, and um, members of my team helped me come up with the, with the new title. Awesome. 
And that is all for this episode of CSB TV's Rewind. To watch full episodes of these CSB TV shows, click the links in the description. Thank you.